When Facebook censors Ron Paul or Twitter bans President Trump, is that censorship? Or because these are private companies, does that automatically make it not censorship? Amazon banned Parler, but is it their right as a private company to choose their customers? We're all serfs of big tech now. What do you call an economy of monopolies without competition or any regulatory restraints? An economy of monopolies that controls both the buying and selling in the markets they control? Monopolies with the power to commit legalized fraud and the profits to buy political influence? Monopolies whose black box algorithms are all powerful but completely opaque to public scrutiny? Call it whatever you want, but it certainly isn't capitalism, which requires competition and market transparency to price capital, labor, risk, credit, goods, services, etc. Black box monopoly is the death of capitalism as it eliminates competition and market transparency. The American economy is now dominated by big tech black box monopolies, and thus what we have isn't a free market system aka capitalism, it's the pretense of capitalism, a slick PR cover for the most rapacious form of exploitation. The Silicon Valley model is simple, achieve monopoly power by scaling the network effect and buying up hundreds of potential competitors with stock printed out of thin air. Once monopoly is achieved, buyers and sellers are both captive to the big tech monopoly, both buyers and sellers of apps, for example, must submit to the profiteering and control of the big tech monopoly. Big tech black box monopolies claim they shouldn't be exposed to any regulation because they've destroyed competition and transparency within the letter of the law. Monopoly platforms that control the flow of data, news and narratives are privatized totalitarianism, cloaked by the pretense of capitalism. Like all totalitarian monopolies, big tech now claims, you can't limit us because now you depend on us. In other words, big tech is now too centralized and powerful to submit to any socio-political controls. It's a neat trick. Enrich the super wealthy investor class with your buyback juiced stock valuations, buying their loyalty and political pull with these outsized gains to keep your monopoly out of reach of any public scrutiny or limits on your profiteering and privatized totalitarianism that our society and economy are now in thrall to privatized totalitarian big tech monopolies is straight out of a science fiction book in which what's perceived as real has been manipulated by those who own the means of manipulation. Serfs on big tech's platform plantations were not just debt serfs in central bank feudalism, were all serfs on big tech's platform plantations. If you don't love your servitude with sufficient enthusiasm, Big Tech has a special place for you, the village of the deplatformed, a village of ghosts who have disappeared from the platform plantations and who no longer show up in search, social media, app stores, etc. Just as the Soviets snipped those sent to the gulag out of photos, the privatized, totalitarian Big Tech monopolies cut out your selfhood and your income. Deplatform doesn't just mean you disappear from view, it also means you've been demonetized, your ability to earn money from your own content has been eliminated. In effect, your labor, content and selfhood have been expropriated by big tech's totalitarian platforms. Big tech monopolies don't just own the plantation of the mind, they own the platform plantations that control what we see, buy and sell, and what the algorithms collect and sell to everyone who wants to influence what we see, buy and sell. All those who believe the privatized totalitarianism of big tech platform plantations or capitalism have been brainwashed into servitude by big tech's pretense of capitalism. Just because totalitarianism and fraud are now legal doesn't mean they're not evil. Welcome back to The Nomad Economist. Please, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Throughout human history, our God-given liberties and freedoms have often been brutally crushed by oppressive governments, and that is still happening all over the world today. But in our time, an additional threat to our liberties and freedoms has emerged. Global corporations just continue to get larger and more powerful, and in recent years they have been increasingly using that power to shape society. This is a very dangerous trend, because in the Western world many of the constraints that our national governments are forced to operate under simply do not apply to corporations. This gives them an enormous amount of leverage, and they are using it. Here in the United States, the federal government still has a monopoly on power in areas such as border security, national defense and foreign policy. But when it comes to the things that matter the most in the day-to-day -day lives of most Americans, it could be argued that the giant corporations have now become more powerful than the federal government. 
For example, our politicians like to brag about how many jobs that they have created, but the truth is that they don't actually create any jobs unless you want to count useless government desk jobs. Our politicians can help to foster an environment that will be favorable for economic growth, but it is the corporations that really determine whether the economy will grow or not. In fact, it could be argued that the corporations are the economy at this point. Over time, it has become increasingly difficult for any American to become truly independent of the corporate system. Even if you own a small business or you work for yourself, there is a good chance that you depend on the big corporations in many ways. If you doubt this, just try to go it on your own, without ever using any corporate products, without ever dealing with a big tech company, and without ever bringing in any income from any corporate source whatsoever. These days, most of our lives are defined by our corporate overlords. They decide what job you will have, what your pay will be, what hours you will work and what your health plan will look like. Beyond that, now many large corporations have decided that there are certain beliefs, opinions and values that their employees are not permitted to have. By now, you have probably heard that a certain actress was fired by Disney for having opinions that were not acceptable. That was a very high-profile case, but the truth is that this sort of thing is constantly happening all over the country at this point. As we move into the future, being guilty of thought crime is going to eliminate large blocks of people from ever having certain types of jobs. If you do not pledge fealty to the current version of political correctness, you simply will not be permitted to hold a prominent position in society. If your beliefs are considered to be offensive, you may get to mop the floors for the elite if you are lucky. Even when you are at home, the elite want to endlessly monitor and control what you do, say and think. The primary way that they do this is through the internet, and in recent months they have tightened their control considerably. The following comes from an opinion piece that was just authored by former U.S. Senator Orrin Hatch. Consider the events of the last month. Social media sites banned the sitting president of the United States from their platforms. A purge of conservative voices on Twitter ensued. Amazon Web Services expunged Parler, a conservative social media site, from the internet. Just days later, YouTube blocked public access to a Senate hearing on COVID-19. These events confirmed what many of us have long known, true political power no longer resides in Washington, but in Silicon Valley. Big tech now effectively decides who has the right to speak, who has the right to assemble online and who has the ability to build a business in the digital age. For many Americans, Twitter's terms of service agreement now has more power over what they can and cannot say in the public square than the First Amendment does. In the old days, Americans could go to the public square and say anything that they want. But now the big tech companies are the public square. Freedom of speech is a thing of the past on the internet, and more voices are being deplatformed with each passing day. This greatly grieved me, because so many other pro-life voices have already been silenced. We desperately need those voices, because if we stay on the path that we are currently on, there is no future for America. On Thursday, Twitter suspended Project Veritas. Project Veritas would like to continue to share their information in the public square, and I would like to continue to share it with my viewers. In fact, I share Project Veritas videos on the most important news all the time. But Twitter has decided that Project Veritas has become too offensive. Cancel culture has gotten wildly out of control, and it is starting to infect every area of our society. Here is more from Orrin Hatch. The pattern of canceling individuals for social media posts is well established. This can result in deplatforming, termination of employment or, if you're baseball legend Kurt Schilling, even losing your health insurance. We're used to seeing cancel culture on a micro scale, a newspaper editor being fired here, a university professor being suspended there. But now, thanks to an assist from big tech, we're seeing cancel culture on a much broader level. Take the mass cancellation of Parler's more than 10 million users, or growing calls to ban Fox News, Newsmax and other right-leaning channels altogether. If successful, these efforts will shrink the window of acceptable viewpoints in American society until conservatives find themselves on the outside. As we continue to go down this road, just think about what this would mean for the next generation of Americans. Children that are guilty of thought crime won't get into good schools, they will never be allowed to have good jobs, they will be shunned by banks and financial institutions, and they will be banned or marginalized by all of the major entities on the internet. Basically, they will have to find a way to survive on the fringes of society somehow. All of this is designed to force people to believe what they are supposed to believe. 
They are always watching everything that you do on the internet, and expressions of non-compliance are not acceptable in this brave new world that we live in. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.